to be it uh, very usable. Uh, I mentioned that my vision is to make it like you are talking to a human being. Hey, Avi, I'm feeling, uh, I'm having some headache today. Can you tell me why? Over time, people started uh, getting, AI, getting to know AI more and trusting AI more. Recently, with ChatGPT, um, it was actually uh, people now really know uh, AI very well. They want uh, as users and they want to try more of these kinds of technologies, what uh, could happen to you and, uh, and maybe uh, allow you to intervene uh, early on and then maybe prevent that uh, thing from happening to you. Welcome to Masters of Change. And today we're in Doha at Qatar Science and Technology Park for conversation with Dr. Hamoud, CEO and founder of Ave, to talk about innovations in health tech. Hello, Dr. Hamoud. Hi. It is a pleasure to have you on Masters of Change on Entrepreneur TV. Thank you so much. Also a pleasure to be talking to you. Thanks for taking the time to come and, and, and talk to us. It's fascinating and what you're doing in health tech space and I'm very curious to dig into the conversation further. Sure. But let's start with an introduction. Yeah. Please share with an audience what is it that you do and what you are building. Uh, so my, my background is in computer science. Uh, I've been a professor at Carnegie Mellon for some time. Um, recently, uh, maybe over the past five years, uh, I started this new project which we call AVI now. Um, the idea started when my son got sick with a chronic illness. Uh, that's what uh, caused the whole thing. Um, um, I wanted to translate the research that I do into something that is more practical, more impactful. Um, uh, so um, then I started working on uh, trying to use artificial intelligence uh, to do medical diagnosis. Um, uh, and uh, it evolved from there. That's how it all started and that's my background. <laughs> That's a very brief introduction. Yeah. So, but let's dig in into Ave. Yeah. What are the current solutions that you offer uh, to what of the healthcare customer problems, right. if we might call it that? Yeah, the core solution is uh, a diagnostic algorithm that uses AI. The idea is um, you can present your complaint to the algorithm. Uh, the algorithm is going to form a medical hypothesis. Uh, mimicking actually how clinical reasoning happen in real life. So uh, based on that hypothesis, the algorithm is going to actually ask you a question as a patient. Based on your answer, the algorithm could continue with the same hypothesis or change it midway. Uh, the session or the conversation uh, continues between the algorithm and the patient uh, for an average of two minutes before it provides a differ differential diagnosis uh, to the patient. Of course, um, we had to uh, work a lot on uh, developing the AI model that can do that, let alone actually validating it because this is medicine. You want to make sure that the algorithm is accurate enough uh, so as you can establish a trust between the algorithm and the patient. So uh, a big part of the work after we finished the model is uh, we went through a scientific validation. Uh, and uh, we believe now we are the most accurate in the field. Uh, there is a research paper about uh, that uh, under review with a peer-reviewed uh, journal. But that's the technology and the scientific side of the work. Of course, that algorithm has multiple applications uh, when it comes to healthcare. Uh, one application is um, uh, after the, the algorithm diagnoses you, uh, it can triage you, meaning it can tell you Maybe you are good and you can take care of yourself at home. Uh, or maybe um, it's better that you follow up with a doctor who can uh, treat you. Uh, but then, um, which doctor? So um, we started working recently with uh, clinics and hospitals here in Doha. We provide them with a system that can learn certain features about their doctors. So the algorithm would know that uh, Dr. X um, uh, has seen over the past six months cases A, B, C with uh, different frequencies. Uh, bottom line, the algorithm is going to get to know about the expertise of doctors on the conditions that they treat. So when a patient talks to Avi, Avi would know the diagnosis. On the flip side, Avi would know the expertise of doctors 
on the platform on that particular diagnosis, then it's going to do uh, what we call personalized matching and ranking. The algorithm is going to tell you, look, I know your diagnosis, it's this, and this is, this is the best doctor for your case, then this, then this, then this. Then you can go uh, educate yourself about those doctors, uh, connect with any of them, either physically or virtually, and then they will uh, give you the treatment and hopefully you will become much better. That's one application. That is a fabulous, however, very complex solution because you're already providing several services. I want to go to the beginning and probably one of the core uh, offerings that you provide the self-diagnosis. Mm -hmm. How do people feel about using it? Yeah, so uh, people have known AI for a long time. AI is not a new domain, uh, right? AI has been uh, uh, maybe here for more than 60 years. Um, uh, of course, uh, over time, people started uh, getting, AI, getting to know AI more and trusting AI more. Recently, with ChatGPT, um, it was actually uh, people now really know uh, AI very well. They want uh, as users, and they want to try more of these kinds of technologies. Uh, so uh, that's in general. In particular, when it comes to medicine and healthcare, uh, of course, you need to... Um, uh, you need to figure out a way so that the patient can really trust the algorithm that uh, they are talking with. Uh, of course, it starts actually with having a good technology because you have to have a good technology, otherwise you cannot establish that trust. Um, and then you need to inform the patient about, uh, about that technology, how good it is. Uh, uh, doctors can talk about it, uh, people can over time uh, develop a certain perception about it when they realize Oh, I, uh, and it's happening, by the way, a lot. Uh, oh, I already self-diagnosed with Avi. I went to the doctor and uh, the diagnosis that the doctor gave me matched actually what Avi was saying. Um, uh, there are many cases now people have been struggling with certain issues they could not know. And then they self-diagnosed with Avi and Avi gave, uh, gave, uh, gave the right diagnosis. Uh, my mom is one of them. Uh, she went, uh, she had 92 uh, tests um, and it took like several weeks for her doctors to diagnose her and then uh, I told her you can use Avi and then in two minutes Avi gave the diagnosis that took the doctors a few weeks and around 92 tests actually to figure out that diagnosis. Really impressive. Yeah. So one question that comes to my mind right yes. now is the new feeling well. A lot of people go yeah. to Google and search their disease symptoms. Yeah. And the real answer is they only figure out which disease has the best SEO. Yeah, yeah. With Avi, right, do you think that you are uh, encouraging more disease discovery and really recommending if people are unwell? But what if I, what if I feel just slightly unwell but there is nothing serious? Is there such an answer that you just need to rest? Yes, AVI does that. That's the uh, triaging component of AVI. So after the diagnostic session with AVI is over, AVI is going to provide you with the differential diagnosis. You can learn more about any of those provided diseases within the DDX. And in addition to that, AVI is going to provide you with what we call the next steps. It could be that you really can stay at home and there is nothing to worry about and you can just like, there is nothing. He will have a good night of sleep. Exactly. So that's certainly actually part of uh, what Avi does. Uh, two, uh, when it comes to the search tools, of course, they are exceptional tools. Um, we all use them, but they are not diagnostic tools. Um, and. Uh, um, if you think about how, even just think a little bit about how diagnosis happens in real life, you go and see a doctor, you present your complaint to the doctor, then the doctor is going to start interacting with you, collecting more information from you before they can even actually converge to something. And sometimes they really realize they, that they need to do certain tests or whatever before they can give you uh, a certain uh, diagnosis. Uh, Google, for instance, um, you submit your keywords, you're going to get a, a ranked list of websites. It's a one-shot model. It's not interactive. It's not conversational AI. It's certainly an exceptional tool, but it's a search tool. So people go and search for whatever they want to search, and then they get a ranked list of websites that are talking about these kinds of things. 
and then they start clicking and reading and sometimes they read th certain things that are scary and then we or whatever. decide that we're ill <laughs> exactly so it's not an it's 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 beautiful to be honest because you can uh, check uh, a lot of information but it's not they are not diagnostic tools Abby is specialized in in medicine it's a diagnostic tool that has certain applications uh, to hospitals and the clinics the way I explained it it also has uh, beautiful applications to health insurance uh, to health insurance companies and that's something that we haven't talked about yet <laughs> of course some people will still get sick but if we can somehow do preventive medicine um, that's that's that would be the second wave uh, honestly of AVI that's how I am envisioning it so uh, that is when we talk about the patient and we are a patient centric uh, company when it comes to the uh, to the provider we want uh, things to happen uh, seamlessly at their side uh, uh, efficiency is uh, something uh, we can do can allow the scheduling rescheduling um, no show management all these kinds of things that happen could happen through uh, the AVI system when it comes to the insurer we want to empower them as well we want everything to happen immediately with a very high accuracy no paperwork uh, everything is within the same ecosystem uh, so uh, no matter how you look even for governments uh, I was about to get yeah. there is my key question here is yeah. does AVI reduce ax uh, reduce the cost of providing health care because yeah. it is very clear yeah. you make access to healthcare easier, yeah. Yeah. but from the government point of view, is yeah. the price reduced as well? Yeah. So I think you would agree with me that there is a certain percentage of cases that do not necessitate seeing doctors. But people do not know. People, if some people feel unwell, they just want to see uh, doctors. And if you have uh, a hospital or a chain of hospitals that are uh, subsidized by the government and uh, it's easy for people, especially uh, people who are not insured to go there and be checked, they would do it, which means actually um, for the percentage of the cases that do not necessitate uh, seeing doctors, that would introduce more pressure into the infrastructure. Imagine now um, uh, the uh, these people self-diagnose with AVI beforehand. Uh, then AVI is going to detect those cases and uh, tell people that um, you're good. You don't have to go anywhere. That would reduce the pressure on the uh, on the healthcare infrastructure. Of course, that would translate into reducing the cost. Uh, that would translate into making the service in there better for people who really need to see the doctors. Uh, so I think every party in the equation will be happy uh, if, if, if this happens. So you're basically providing a B2C solution in a highly regulated healthcare industry. Right. How did you go about the growth of the product and the user acquisition? Right. Avi now has been downloaded in 175 countries. Congratulations. Uh, what an achievement. Thank you so much. So it's it's... It's, it's uh, using these kinds of tools is uh, already permissible. Now, when it comes to the referral part, uh, when we uh, refer the patient to the doctor, now uh, uh, we make deals with hospitals and the clinics, uh, and it's their liability to make sure that these doctors are licensed doctors, are uh, permitted as per the regulations of any country that they are at, because our contracts are with the providers, with the hospitals and the clinics. And then once the patient goes and sees the doctors, then it's the liability of the hospital and the doctor, uh, not anymore the liability of Avi. One question that I've been dying to ask, yeah. it's you are building a giant machine for the healthcare industry. Yeah. There are so many different moving parts that you're combining into one smoothly moving machine. Yeah. Where all of this building new technology is really expensive. So you uh, raise some funding, but uh, how is is a lot of that funded through poor growth, or are you still in the phase of raising additional funding to escalate? Right. Avi uh, started like we spent literally uh, around four years just on R and D, but again it was this core algorithm. Uh, uh, now uh, we went through two financing rounds, pre-seed and seed. Uh, we are at the moment going through Series A. Um, we are run it, uh, running it in the U.S. Uh, uh, and uh, it's a just like, of course, we are still relying on investment capital, um, but we are also monetizing now uh, the ecosystem and things are just growing.
Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. The title of the series is Masters of Change. Okay. With this in mind, what changes do you foresee coming in the health tech industry? Yeah. And how are you planning to yeah. surf it? We want everything to be fast, uh, accurate, uh, seamless, uh, personalized, because it's just like for your case. Uh, that's how we are viewing it uh, from the patient perspective. And there's something else that uh, we've been actually um, uh, thinking about for some time now, which is the medical prognosis. Imagine we can even predict what uh, could happen to you and, uh, and maybe uh, allow you to intervene uh, early on and then maybe prevent that uh, thing from happening to you. Uh, I would be the happiest person in the world if uh, people, if, if people do not get sick. What an amazing job you are doing. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure to have you on the show. Hope this episode provides you valuable insights that will empower you to master the growth of your business. Visit entrepreneur.com for your daily dose of business news and expert advice. You will find this and all future episodes on Entrepreneur TV. We're dedicated to making the show valuable to you. So please don't hesitate to contact me to share your feedback, future guest suggestions, as well as discuss sponsorship opportunities. Stay tuned for the next episode. Until then, keep innovating, keep pushing boundaries.